Okay, it's been a while since I've recorded anything to do with my Z80 project. Um, to be honest, I've not had that much time to put into it. I um, I wish I did. I had um, a week off school, but <laughs> I did actually spend it studying like it was supposed to be for, uh, which is unusual being a student. Um, but anyway, I um, as I alluded to in my update video, I did figure the problem out of why everything was going weird on it. It was in fact because I didn't set the stack pointer. Um, but in my uh, in the simulator I'm using oh, just gonna bring these all in focus. The simulator I'm using it uses um, it has virtual memory. Basically it's it's a virtual RAM, 64k RAM for the entire thing. And uh, by default See if I how to do this now. Clear memory, right? By default, stack pointer is FFFF, which is the highest address possible in the RAM space. That's why it worked on mine. It was using that as the uh, stack pointer, and so that's why it worked in the simulation. It used that as a stack pointer, and of course, in the virtual thing, there is memory there but in my board there isn't so it would it would go into the delay routine and then it would return to some random number it would find by reading FFFF -F -F -F, which uh, unfortunately I I can't predict where that's going so so that's what was happening there so now the first thing I do now is I tell it where the RAM top is. I actually set it here as a variable so I can change it. Um, let's see at 47FF because the my RAM starts at 4000 or 4000 hex and it's 7FF uh, bytes long because it's a 2k uh, RAM. So I set that as the RAM top because it the stack builds downwards towards zero so that's what that's all about okay so anyway yeah this is the test program I wrote to flash the LED so I'll go over a little bit about how it's working here obviously the I, um, I set the stack pointer here using this and then I set the 8255 here I set the ports up. A and B, A, sorry, A and C are output and B is input. And then, so basically, it says where it's sending it to. So it's hex zero three, which is the address control word. That's like the address of the control word on the eight two five five. And there's the the uh, um, the bitmap of the of the control thing. Let's see if I can bring it into uh, the display here. Basically that's that's the control word map. It's in the A255 datasheet if anyone's interested in looking at it. It's on page 5 on the one I've got. Okay. Uh, and then the next thing I do is I jump to a delay to let it settle and then I jump to the main program which is right here. Now I told this to go to address 100 uh, just to keep it out of the way. I don't really need to do that but I thought it keeps it nice and tidy and I can see in the code exactly where it is when I look at the hex file. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm telling it that's the address for port C, set FF to it and then send it. And then call for a delay, uh, port C again, let's put 0 this time and send it and delay and then loop around so that should be basically sets the whole of F on and the whole of F off again uh, and here's the delay delay routine now I did borrow this delay routine um, let's see if I can find the gen gentleman that did it um, but anyway it's um, dinseradin.com uh, 
this is the person who I borrowed the delay routine from and uh, yeah it's been very helpful I'm, you know I, I will write my own delay routine eventually I just wanted one that I knew was working okay uh, but yeah that's that's basically how it works and what I'll do is I will uh, I'm gonna bring up a little window right here and show you it working see it just flashing away there that's, uh, so that works and then okay so that tests the output now I wanted to um, let's get the input working I think I shown this during the uh, my uh, update video but I will I'll give you a quick look it's basically the same code almost except now I uh, I read the address of port B into the accumulator and uh, and then I immediately output that to port C and then take a delay and uh, and as you can see here to the right that it it causes the light to go on when I hold it down and when I let go it immediately goes off and, uh, and that that looks pretty good it actually proves that I can read and write from the uh, the ports now now the next challenge I'm working on right now is getting a LCD to work and uh, I'm not having any luck with this just yet uh, as you can see, here's a, a that delay, delay routine again, actually, with the uh, the gentleman's uh, name written on it. Um, but yeah, I'm. I haven't really spent too much time with it myself. I uh, I did make a um, a little card that plugs in on top of the A255 with uh, a contrast and the LCD on it so I can uh, I can try and write to it but but yeah, as of recording I have not had any luck getting anything on that yet but I, I will show it in uh, in future uh, in future videos um, I, I'm also looking into getting a a keypad working as well which I can't I don't have it at hand right now but it's a uh, it's a 4x4 keypad my main point is I want to build a small monitor program I suppose once I get the LCD working so I can actually start typing code into the memory directly and be able to run it and then from then on I will eventually do some PC interfacing and be loading programs directly in that way. That's the uh, that's the goals right now. But the main goal right now is to get the LCD working. So I'm going to leave off for now. Uh, hopefully next time I will have some more uh, news. But sorry, this is a short video. And uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.